Edward Bernays. You might not have heard of him before, but you've probably heard of his uncle, Sigmund Freud. Bernays was the first individual to take Freud's ideas about the unconscious mind and implement them in the business world to manipulate the masses. Bernays helped American corporations sell products that people didn't need by manipulating their unconscious desires. After his time managing the US propaganda for World War I in Europe, Bernays realized that he could use the same propaganda tactics that elevated Woodrow Wilson, the then US president, to the status of hero of democracy during the time of war and apply them during peacetime in the world of business. Because the word propaganda gained a bad connotation with Nazi Germany, Bernays came up with a new term to describe the massive unconscious manipulation of the masses. Instead of propaganda, he coined the term public relations or PR. One of Bernays' greatest innovations in public relations was using the ideas in Freud's book General Introduction to Psychoanalysis to develop strategies and marketing events to influence the buying decisions of large groups of individuals. You see, Bernays realized that presenting consumers with facts was not how you got sales, because facts belong in the realm of the conscious, and to really manipulate the minds of the masses, he needed to get into their unconscious desires. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang is no stranger to such tactics. One of the semiconductor industry's heroes, Jensen's brilliant leadership has taken NVIDIA from a relatively small maker of gaming products valued at $5 billion in 2010 to a $360 billion company today. An industry visionary, Jensen Huang saw the potential for GPUs to be much more than graphics accelerators and is today on the forefront of the AI revolution. With the launch of the RTX line of GPUs at the end of 2018, Jensen seems to be taking Nvidia in a different direction when it comes to gaming. Raw performance is no longer the name of the game, but rather new features that improve image fidelity, like real-time ray tracing and AI power technologies like DLSS, that promise to democratize high frame rates and high resolutions like 4K without needing massively expensive hardware. But is this really the future for graphics in games? Will AI-powered upscaling make gaming at native resolutions unnecessary, just like MP3s made full-quality music CDs a thing of the past? After acquiring Mellanox last year, NVIDIA have now announced that they will be acquiring the world's largest processor IP vendor, ARM. How are these acquisitions tied to the future that Jensen envisions for the GPU? What is Jensen's master plan for NVIDIA? As you're about to see, Jensen Huang and Edward Bernays might be two visionaries separated by a century of technological development, but their ambition and methods are not that different, and we'll look at how Jensen Huang is preparing a revolution in the semiconductor industry. Today's video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends, a sand-based battle game with RPG elements that is available on the PC and on mobile devices. I've been playing it on my phone while I queue outside a supermarket waiting to get in. Wearing a mask even makes the game feel more immersive. <laughs> the battle system and the character development are the two main things that keep me hooked to the game. They remind me of the old school CRPGs that I used to play back in the 90s. So for instance, I like to use this champion Kyle to AoE and weaken the opposing team first, then buff my whole team with War Priest with a blessing, then use Shaman to attack and place another buff, and then finish it off with Terror Beast who can sort of tank. Kyle then finishes the rest of them off with another AoE. So you have all these intricate synergies that at least for me are the main hook of this game, as well as discovering different strategies and min-maxing my team of champions for maximum damage output. There's a campaign that's surprisingly well written for a mobile game and a crazy amount of depth. And being a fan of Dungeons & Dragons, I really like the art style of all the champions and enemies in this game. Raid just released the Artifact Forge, where you can save time and craft artifacts directly, as well as a whole new advanced quest system with great rewards. They also will be bringing some cool new champions, and they're developing the new Doom Tower as we speak, which I'm curious to try out. So download Raid Shadow Legends and see if you like it. It's free. Check the description box, and if you're a new player, you can get 100,000 and silver, two clan boss keys, ten mystery shards, and a free awesome champion to get you started. The dot exe cushioner. Your rewards will be here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. Again, links in the description. 
One thing that has left people confused when it comes to the recent launch of the Ampere GPUs is why has Nvidia switched to Samsung and their inferior 8 nanometer process node and risk getting dethroned by AMD's usage of TSMC 7 nanometer? Has Jensen dropped the ball here when it comes to gaming? Has he lost his marbles? In my review of the RX 6800 and 6800 XT, I found the top AMD card beats the 3080 more often than not and was not too far from the much more expensive 3090 in many cases, in some rare instances even beating it. Other reviewers have had similar results although more extensive 4K testing, especially in older titles, seems to put the 3080 ahead of the 6800 XT more often than what I found in more recent titles. Overall, I think the 6 6800 XT and 3080 are very comparable products, but clearly Nvidia still holds the performance crown with the $1500 3090, at least until AMD 6900 XT launches, so even if we stick to facts alone, the reality is that Nvidia is still the leader in performance and features, even though they're on an inferior node, all the while charging only a small premium over the competition. Considering Nvidia I effectively behind in terms of process node, it seems to me that they they're doing fine when it comes to their gaming GPUs. Yes, they're not exactly efficient and most of the models are huge, but the performance is still there and when it comes to ray tracing, AMD is understandably still behind. So I don't think Jensen dropped the ball when he decided to choose Samsung's 8 nanometer instead of TSMC's 7 nanometer. I think it's actually a feat that the GPUs are still competitive in spite of the node disadvantage. I do think AMD will gain back some market share in PC graphics next Next year, but I don't think Nvidia is under threat of losing their leadership position in the market. The great thing about AMD having achieved parity is that we now have options, and the 6900 XT should cement that further. But realistically, I think the vast majority of gamers would still rather pay a bit extra to get an Nvidia GPU. If we analyze Jensen's presentation for the original 1080 Ti, we see these words pop up the most. So you see that the terms that Jensen used the most related to traditional graphics effects in games, like rendering or simulation or smoke or shadows. In other words, the speed up in shading and rasterization were the selling points for the 1080 Ti. If we look at the recent Ampere launch, however, we see this. Traditional graphics effects in games, which will still be relevant for years to come, are barely mentioned. Instead, we see ray tracing mentioned 51 times and RT cores 37. Next is AI and then DLSS as the most used words by Jensen. We're looking at a completely different focus when it comes to Nvidia's gaming products. At the end of the day, for the mass gaming consumer, it matters very little that Nvidia is on Samsung 8 nanometers instead of the SMC 7 nanometers, or that AMD has caught up in terms of raw performance. Thanks to Jensen's marketing in the mind of the mass consumer, what really matters is ray tracing and AI-powered features like the LSS. Most of you watching will see past this, I would assume, but the mainstream media and the average consumer will buy into Jensen's propaganda regarding these features. And to be fair, the LSS is a relevant feature. It just isn't supported in barely anything. And ray tracing is exciting, but it's coming with a huge performance hit. Those are the facts. But just like with Bernays, facts matter very little here. Because in the minds of the masses, if you are not getting these features, then you are missing out. If we look at Nvidia's latest Q3 earnings, we see revenue was over 4.8 billion, up 57% compared to the same period last year, and the company's gross margin is still over 60%. According to Nvidia, revenue from gaming alone grew 37% year on year, so obviously this comes in large part thanks to the launch of Ampere. But Ampere is not in stock anywhere, how can Nvidia be making this much money from sales of the 3080 and 3070? Well, that's indeed an interesting question, and there are two possible explanations. Either the stock situation is not as bad as we think, and the GPUs are indeed being sold in large quantities as soon as they hit retail, or perhaps the people buying them aren't gamers. A recent report over at Bitcoin.com, quoting Barron's, suggests that Nvidia sold at least $175 million worth of MPA GPUs to Ethereum miners. So even though there is indeed a supply constraint at the moment, well, 
worldwide. It seems the stock situation isn't as bad for Nvidia as first thought. It's just that gamers might not be the ones having priority access to these GPUs. I couldn't find clear evidence that miners are indeed buying most of the Ampere GPUs, so I wouldn't put too much stock on that, no pun intended. I've been paying close attention to the stock situation using bots, and 3080s appear in stock on a daily basis all around the world, but are gone within minutes. Meanwhile, the 6000 series from AMD never seem to be in stock at all. But anyway, as far as gaming is concerned, I think Nvidia is perfectly content with the current state of affairs. Jensen is continuing to hammer into the minds of the masses that real-time ray tracing is what they need, and Nvidia is the company to bring it to them. And you know what? Judging by these earnings, I think it's working. Next year, AMD will move to 5 nanometer, and Nvidia will probably move to Samsung's UV process for the gaming cards. And I think we will see a similar situation to what we have today. I don't see this changing until MCM makes it into consumer products. But it's when we look beyond gaming that we see Jensen's true ambitions for Nvidia. One of the recent additions to their product arsenal is the Bluefield 2 DPU, a chip that promises to be a data center on chip. Nvidia is partnering with the world's leader in virtualization, VMware, which is part of Dell, to get this into data centers. I want I wonder if Michael Dell would consider an offer from Nvidia for their most profitable business. It might be a bone too large for Nvidia to chew on, but then again, I never thought I'd see Nvidia buying ARM. But anyway, Nvidia's Bluefield 2 DPU is part of Nvidia's strategy to put a data center in warehouses, in factories, on trucks, 5G base stations, and many other businesses that can leverage artificial intelligence. A data processing unit is trying to do for the data center what GPUs did in the consumer space accelerate specific workloads. In this case, the networking, storage and the security for instance. Inside the Bluefield chip are programmable ARM cores and Mellanox network adapters. Mellanox already belongs to Nvidia and ARM should follow next. So Nvidia have identified that in the move to domain specific accelerators, the data center needs a specialized processor that can offload specific workloads away from the host CPU. So if Nvidia is accelerating the data center with GPUs already, a leader in that segment in fact, and is now offloading crucial tasks away from the host CPU, from security to networking to storage, what part of the data center do you think is losing its relevance? The high performance CPU. So that's Xeon from Intel and Epic from AMD, the one thing that Nvidia doesn't have. Jensen's plan is to dominate the data center by removing the need for a powerful host CPU to run most of the workloads. Instead, the vast majority of workloads are done on accelerators and the host CPU can become something more modest. You know, like an ARM chip. One of the arguments against ARM chips in servers is that they can't compete with high performance parts. But if the CPU loses its relevance, this will become a moot point. It's a clever approach from Nvidia. The end devices are on ARM, or are migrating to ARM, as I discussed in a video a couple of years ago. That video prophesized that Apple would move to ARM and that Microsoft would follow suit along with the rest of the industry. If consumer devices are all ARM based, it makes sense for the data center to be based on ARM as well. The less translation layers, the better. Besides Mellanox connectivity and ARM programmable cores, one variant of Bluefield 2, the 2X, has built-in compute capability with an Ampere GPU for AI workloads. So you get the full package here. Backing this new hardware is of course software. Just like CUDA revolutionized the industry by making the GPU much more than just an accelerator for gaming, but instead of massively parallel processor for other types of workloads, Nvidia has a similar software tech for DPUs called Docker. So what does this all mean for us enthusiasts? If you remember the enthusiastic Adobe Hairman from the CS Intel presentation in January, he demoed how Photoshop could use hardware blocks in the 10th gen Intel chips to accelerate AI-powered features, like for instance perfectly and instantly cropping a flower, or let AI automatically reframe a video in Premiere to make sure the relevant content stays in frame when exporting 
being in portrait mode. So this is the tip of the iceberg when it comes to AI getting integrated into software and applications that we all use. And all of these things will need to get accelerated. Security is another key area where AI can play a key role, identifying threats or managing things like a DDoS attack. And as we experienced in this crazy year, collaborative software will become more prevalent and here too AI can help manage source control or connectivity. And even in games, we will start to see AI being used to improve more than just image quality. So is Nvidia bringing something like this DPU board to the consumer space? It's possible, but I think it's more likely that we will see Nvidia bring this to us in a different form. The Apple M1 already features a ton of accelerators to offload workloads from the CPU cores. The difference between the M1 and Nvidia's DPU is that they're all inside the SoC. I suspect that Jensen has seen the writing on the wall for x86 and will bring an SoC to the consumer space that's very similar to the Apple M1, that will run x86 through a translation layer and that will provide hardware acceleration that will trickle down from this DPU hardware as well as, of course, GPUs. You can see why Intel is scrambling to move that XPU strategy forward and why AMD is looking to buy Xilinx. I have a feeling that both AMD and Intel were a bit late to identify the threat of acceleration though, and I think Nvidia's strategy is the most agile one. This Bluefield chip was something that Mellanox was already working on and Nvidia is already bringing the second generation to market with a roadmap for Gen 3 and 4 already disclosed. The ARM acquisition is looking to be complete in Q1 of 2022, so just over a year from now, and I have little doubt that by then Nvidia will have something akin to the M1 to bring to market. <laughs> this means we have Apple, Microsoft and Nvidia pushing ARM, while Intel and AMD are pushing x86. And my money is on the three software giants to win this fight, and for Intel and AMD to be left behind. AMD can adapt, then not married to x86, but if they want to be in the run for leadership, I think they better start creating an ARM chip with Xilinx programmable acceleration right now and put the Zen strategy on the side. It doesn't matter that Zen 4 or 5 has 80 or 160 cores if the market moves towards AI-powered software that's accelerated by specialized blocks. Another advantage that Nvidia has over their direct competitors is that they're a software company. So just like Apple, they can integrate hardware and software to maximize both. This is Jensen's grand vision for Nvidia, the domination of the server market followed by the PC space by making the host CPU almost irrelevant when you consider that most heavy workloads will be offloaded to accelerators. And the ARM acquisition is fundamental for this plan to come to fruition. A controversial figure, Jensen Huang is no doubt one of this industry's greatest vision while his Bernays-style marketing mastery is maintaining Nvidia as a leader in gaming, thanks to the masses gobbling up RTX and DLSS, if you look at the signs you can see that Jensen is focusing on the bigger picture and is preparing Nvidia for the revolution that is coming to this industry. Be sure to subscribe and set your notifications to all so you don't miss my future analysis as the semiconductor industry evolves. This video was made possible by my awesome patrons. Join my Patreon today and get exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server, where you can talk to me directly and join a community of like-minded and welcoming enthusiasts in a healthy environment. If you can't contribute financially at this time, then please give this video a like as that really helps the channel. Thanks for watching and until the next one.